In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. I've been told that my references are not too topical, so forgive me if I start off with the ancient Theban cycle of Sophocles and the play Oedipus Tyrannus. I'll explain. The scene opens on Oedipus the king looking to find the source of a great plague that's fall upon his city. And he's told by the prophet of Thebes that the, the plague has been caused because the killer of their former king is in their midst. And Apollo, the god who sends plagues, is offended by this injustice. And so Oedipus is struggling to find who in fact killed their king. And he starts this quest. And he brings in Tiresias, the prophet of Thebes, to ask Tiresias what he knows of the circumstances, what he can guide and deliver in terms of wisdom to help Oedipus come to the conclusion. Well, Tiresias doesn't really want to give up that much information. And that's because he knows a terrible secret a secret that Oedipus will discover at the end of the play, and a secret that I won't spoil for you, even though it's been over 2,500 years since the play was first published. But the two of them get into an argument, and this is the point of my very topical reference. Tiresias is then maligned by Oedipus. Tiresias is chastised for not telling him what he wants to know. And Oedipus mocks him because Tiresias is blind. He's blind and yet he's a prophet. And so Tiresias quips. He says, quote, so you mock my blindness, let me tell you this. You with your precious eyes, you are blind to the corruption of your life. See, although Tiresias is blind, he knows and can see the truth. And although Oedipus has eyes, for now, spoiler alert. <laughs> Although Oedipus has eyes, he is blind to the corruption of his own life, his own deeds, and the things that surround him. So although this one lacks eyes, he can see clearly. And although this one possesses eyes, he is blind. And this is what we find today. This is what we find, in fact, every time that Christ comes and heals a blind man. We hear the two today crying out, Son of David, have mercy on me. The same cry that Bart Bart Bartimaeus cries out, another blind man healed by Christ. And very similar to the man born blind who's healed in the Gospel of John. Each time that a blind man is healed by Christ, he is criticized, he is mocked, and he is attempted to be silenced by the Pharisees and those around him. And so we see with Bartimaeus, when he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, the many around him warned him to be quiet. But instead he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And with the man born blind, it says, so they called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. And he responds, if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, has it, it has been unheard of that anyone open the eyes of one who is born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. But in both these cases and today, although Matthew doesn't record it, but the other evangelists do, this blind man, these two blind men, are threatened by the crowd to be silent to pack away their cries for mercy and to just keep their mouth shut. Well, it's in fact the same people who are crying out that can actually see, although they have no eyes. And they know that Christ is the son of David. The Pharisees criticize him again and again for receiving that title, for not being worthy, for not following after their prescriptions of the law. And although they have eyes, 
And although they can see all of the miracles that are happening around them, although they can see the following that Christ has developed, when Christ stands in front of them, he says to them, quote, Woe to you, blind guides. You say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he's obliged to perform it. You fools, you are blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And you also say, whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is obliged to perform it. You fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies it. Later on in that same speech, he will call them again blind guides, and yet later on in that same speech addressing the Pharisees, he will say, O blind Pharisees. Much like Oedipus, they have eyes, but they are blind to the corruption of their life. You see, Oedipus didn't want to hear what Tiresias had to say because it meant losing power. It meant losing his position. It meant losing all the things that he had spent so long building up for his own glory. It even meant losing relationships, which were improper and unholy. And so instead of seeing what the blind man could see, Oedipus chose to cling more tightly to his power, cling more tightly to his false relationships, cling more tightly to his titles and to what the world expected of him. And he was blind to the corruption of his life. In the same way, the Pharisees, cling to the titles that they have. Earlier in this speech where Christ calls them blind, he says, you love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You want to be seated at the greatest place in the banquet. You wear broad fringe so that everyone can see and know who you are in the marketplace. Challenge those who would challenge the economy you've built around the temple for fear that you might lose your wealth. You blind Pharisees, you blind guides, woe to you. So Christ criticizes those who should be able to see and But what is it that causes their blindness? It's that fear. Because of fear, these men, both Oedipus and the Pharisees, choose to look away from what is true choose to close their eyes to what is in front of them, choose not to see and prefer blindness to sight, while the men who sit on the side of the road and are actually physically blind and can't see anything know and perceive and see the truth, that the Son of David, the Son of God, who has the power to heal them, is walking by at that moment. They're not afraid. And when the community tells them to be quiet and keep quiet, they cry out all the more. They're not afraid. You see, it is fear that drives this self-imposed blindness of the Pharisees, of Tiresias, and even us, when we operate out of fear and cling to those things that we think are secure in this world. When we do that, we choose to look past the truth. We choose darkness and blindness. Look at St. Paul as an example. He walks through this life clinging to his role as a Pharisee, clinging to the teachings of his teacher Gamaliel, and as a result, persecuting the church being present at the stoning and directing the stoning of the first martyr, Stephen, asking for letters so that he can go and hunt down more Christians and bring them to Jerusalem. He is afraid because his Pharisaic Judaism is under attack. It is losing worshipers to the one true faith of God. And so in fear, St. Paul reacts and strikes out and when Christ appears to him on the road to Damascus, he suffers physical blindness to match the spiritual blindness that he has chosen. And it's only when he's received into the church, it's only when he embraces the truth of Christ and leaves aside those things that he was afraid of before, that the scales fall from his eyes and he begins to see once again. 
physically healed, much like the blind man on the side of the road today who cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. But more importantly, spiritually healed, able now to see the one true Christ to whom he was blind and persecuting before. And so when fear enters into our life and we grasp and clasp at those things that we think give us stability, we must ask ourselves, are we choosing to be blind to Christ? Are we choosing, as the Pharisees, the praise of men over the praise of God? Are we afraid of losing social status by following after the truth of Christ? Are we afraid of losing friends and families who, are an, who have an antipathy and are opposed to Christ himself by our following the truth? When we esteem our place in the world over our place in the church, we choose blindness. When we privilege unhealthy relationships over our proper relation to the Lord, our God, and to our brothers and sisters in the church, we choose blindness. We must shed and cast off those things that we cling to for security because they blind us to the truth. The truth is that the Lord, our God, is the one deserving of praise, not us. The truth is that the proper relationships to cultivate are established upon him and him alone, with him as the center of our relationships, we find truth. Our status in this world pales in comparison to our status as Orthodox Christians. And so if we ever fear to lose those things, we put ourselves at risk of the blindness of Oedipus and the Pharisees. Rejecting Christ, the mercy that he offers, the peace that he provides in the midst of turmoil and struggle, the grace that he gives to those who follow after him, the healing to those who love him and are suffering. When we choose to turn away from him, we choose blindness. But we as Orthodox Christians, like the man born blind, like Bartimaeus, and like the two today, should cry out all the more, Lord Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen.